So next up, we have Helen from De Montfort University. Their repository is called Dora, and this particular project is called Explorer. Okay, so um, our project's called Explorer, which stands for embedding existing proprietary learning in an open source repository to evolve new resources. That's not a catchy name, that's just basically to fit Explorer. Um, okay, so De Montfort's uh, De um, repository is called De Montfort University Research Archive, and it's a DSpace um, repository. And it's established in 2004 um, as a pilot service. And uh, by 2007, it was a fully operational service. And in 2008, I was employed as the full-time repository officer. Um, and currently, we contain, uh, Dora contains 4,500 records. Uh, most of these are metadata-only records. That's, um, our full text um, level is only about 10, 10, 15% at the moment. Okay, so the issues that we had were um, we had a low self-depositing level. Um, and the... Uh, number of submissions by the Faculty of Art, Design and Humanities was very low compared to, the, um, compared to our, other, other, our other faculties. Um, and Dora had a very limited integration with our other uh, DMU research processes and systems. That's both technical and um, um, just sort of policy and um, you know, other sort of systems. Um, so we came up with the uh, Explorer project um, to try and increase the um, the embeddedness of uh, Dora within DMU systems. Um, so we had two strands of the project. The first was um, uh, to develop and implement workflows and processes to enhance and embed Dora within the uh, DMU research environment. And to do this, we uh, conducted focus groups and questionnaires. Um, we asked um, researchers, you know, what they wanted. Um, how did they? How did they um, promote their research outputs? Um, did they use um, the university's um, research pages, the university profile pages, and that sort of thing? Um, and we're also uh, we're going to are going to consult the embedded and enriched projects um, to, because they've produced um, their final reports explain how they uh, developed advocacy project uh, projects and um, how they embedded it within their um, research processes. Uh, then strand two, which is a slightly more um, I don't know, exciting. Um, strand was we were going to adapt and integrate some tools uh, that had already been developed by JISC to enlarge Dora and to, um, to enable larger uh, and wider variety of outputs, um, mainly those that would uh, need to be submitted for REF2 uh, 2014. And the, the, pro the previous JISC projects we were going to look at were the Culture Project, uh, the Air Project, the Me Prints and uh, ERA. Okay, so when we conducted um, so the first round, we conducted three focus groups <coughs> uh, and we carried out an online survey. Um, we were quite pleased with the online survey because we actually got uh, 81 respondents, which doesn't sound many, but that was um, uh, twice as many as we expected. Um, the project, the Explore projects run between uh, the main participants, uh, are the library and the um, university research office. And the university, university research office had uh, carried out surveys before of researchers and they... Uh, uh, you know, didn't really get much respondent, uh, response for those surveys, so they were quite pleased with this survey. Uh, and the results were very useful and informative. Um, the results of the survey was that most respondents knew about Dora, um, and the majority of output types were, were text. But, the, um, but those that did produce non-text outputs, the, the outputs were very varied between music, graphics, um, photos, video, everything. Um, and we, one of the things we asked, what, what services would encourage people to use Dora more and sort of deposit and to actually use it. Uh, and one of the things was that the, um, would be the production of statistics and the reuse of the data. So one of the things that was most, um, one of the biggest responses about how, how often researchers had to um, submit their output information. Um, it was normally to about, you know, each year it was normally about three or four different times they had to transmit the same information. And so they were very interested in uh, you know, being able to submit it once and that information being reused um, again and again. Um, 
And there are some other improvements they suggested, such as um, the, ability, the way that it looked, the um, search processes and the submission process. Um, so from the surveys and the focus groups, we, um, we're going to create an updated process map. Um, we could, within each, previously, each faculty had um, sort of created, what created, but each had, faculty had its own submission, different submission process about who was going to do it, um, whether it was the academics themselves, was there was a, um, a faculty um, door a person that was going to do it for them. Um, so hopefully now we're going to just simplify that down to, to one process. And um, we're going to have an improved and sort of uh, set advocacy plan. Uh, at the moment, it's fairly uh, ad hoc and responsive to, to people's demands. Um, and we're going to try and uh, be a bit more proactive for that. OK, uh, the key technical work that, um, that we, we in strand two that we um, need to do is to improve the display of non-text items. And to do this, um, we're going to try and develop some sort of culture type um, plugin for DSpace. Um, because the, the current uh, culture plugin won't work with DSpace or it's not easy to convert. So we're going to try to um, get some of that functionality, for example, the playing of videos within um, Dora, um, the tabbed um, display so that people can display the, the images as well as the text and the, the context of items. Um, so far, we've, the, the, the thing we've, uh, the technical process that we've developed most is the video. So we've now got um, video to actually play within um, the space um, repository. So it's actually, you just click on the video within the page and it doesn't need to launch something else or do anything like that. So apparently that was the most technically difficult. So we did that first and then we're going to try and um, do the same thing with other um, media types. Okay. Um, one um, sort of advantage we did have was that um, the university's um, going to have a new website, uh, was meant to, from September, October time. Uh, and one of the things we want to do is to um, integrate um, Dora further within this. Within the new um, university website, each researcher is going to have their own page. And hopefully the, we're going to, um, the information contained in Dora will populate the, the output parts of, um, of that page. Um, that was one of the things that came out of the survey was that um, uh, researchers currently have research pages, but um, you know, it's up to them to update those pages or people are unclear as who's meant to update those pages. Some of those pages haven't been updated for you know, a couple of years. So um, hopefully if it can all be automated, then um, that would help a lot. Um, so one of the things we were looking at was me prints, perhaps doing something like that. But we're not sure now whether we'll need to follow that because the, the um, new website is meant to do many of those things um, to display um, you know, interest uh, and that sort of thing as well. So rather than do it twice, um, we might have to change um, our thinking on that. Um, the other thing we looked at is testing the Serif for F plugin. Um, and it works with Indora. Um, but what we need to, know, to do now is to review um, what is pulled out using this tool and whether we need to develop something that um, will enable people to choose which items they want to be, um, to be pulled out through the, the Serif for F plugin. Um, so we, might need to, we need to do some further testing and modification and see whether we need any um, change in the way that we collect our metadata or what metadata we collect for that. Um, so in summary, the survey was uh, very successful um, and provided us with uh, lots of things to think about. Uh, the technical work has proved more complicated than we expected, um, but hopefully when it's completed it will uh, provide lots of uh, functionality for DSpace users because at the moment sort of these sort of things aren't really, really being developed uh, for DSpace. Um, and we're um, yeah, currently in the process of creating the uh, documentation for the new wor uh, workflows um, and the documentation for that. So if you want to find out anything more about the uh, Explorer project, uh, you can either email me um, and Pope, or the project uh, leader, who's a manager, who's Elizabeth Lunt, who's the uh, RDO contact, or you can visit our, um, our blog. <laughs>